Hello, this is just a quick overview of a new AI agentic um, tool that I've seen appear in the last couple of, in the last week or so. It's by OpenAI, so I think it's definitely worth um, taking a look at. Um, it appeared on my LinkedIn feed, a guy called Scott Moore mentioned that OpenAI has just released this open source demo of a UI testing agent that uses their OpenAI computer use agent model, the responses API and Playwright. And um, we seem to get a bit of traction. Um, in addition, Jonathan Wright, who presented at Eurostar, seemed to be, um, I think Liam's, one of Liam's favorite talks. Um, he thinks this release of OpenAI marks the end of the test automation tools vendor wars. So it seems like he thinks this is kind of a big deal. So my questions were, how easy is it to get up and off the ground? How expensive is it to run? And um, could it give us anything that we don't already have? So looking at my billing for OpenAI, I've currently got a credit balance of $7.16. Um, you need to have an OpenAI uh, API enabled in order to do this. And to be honest, um, you run out of free credits very, very quickly. So you, you basically need to pay for it, um, which isn't as good as what we already have, but here we go. So how does it work? So this is the GitHub repo for the OpenAI testing agent demo. It's got very, very good and easy to follow um, uh, commands here and steps to use. Um, and I basically just followed to the letter the steps that were here. And I got this up and running in, uh, I got this up and running in a couple of minutes. I needed to then that I had a, found a fault and then I checked in the issues log and someone else had had a similar fault. So I was able to um, debug what were, what the problem was with the missing issue. And I've added a comment as well to say that this instruction that, that the guy recommended um, worked correctly. So just in case you come across the same error, um, talking about lightning CSS, um, when you're trying to run this, um, take a look at the fix in the issues. Um, so yeah, so, so that was all that was needed, just cloning the repo, installing the dependencies, including Playwright, and then hitting NPM run dev. So I'm going to show that now. I'm going to navigate to my uh, desktop, my AI experiments. I'm going to go to my open AI testing agent demo and open a Git bash. And then all I'm going to do is enter the npm run dev command. So you can see there it's starting things up. So this is a whole environment. Um, it is a front end UI, a sample app and the computer user agent server. And then to see the front end UI and run the demo, we go to that local host URL. So I'm going to open this link and open that link. And we should start to see that kind of compiling and appearing. So it already brings up a UI. It kind of reminds me of um, what Liam's been doing in Google Gemini, the um, uh, Jupyter notebooks but it's got a predefined prompt for you. It says it wants you to purchase two clothing items, a green shirt and a striped black and white polo. Interestingly, I tried to modify this text to say a red shirt and it didn't read this modification that I'd made. So um, I think the AI is already a little biased with this content because it ended up buying a green shirt and a black and white polo despite the fact I asked for a red one. But anyway, um, the idea is you can enter your prompt and you can then configure variables. If 
it lets me do it and this is our store account so this is the account that it's spun up Okay, so I'm going to enter, so there's a test username and password that it provides on the documentation here, test username and password. I needed to create a .env.development file within the code once I'd cloned it to um, add those parameters in. That was the only bit of code that, I, that was needed, uh, just create, create another file. Um, we're going to change this to um, Amy Smith and put our own info in just so we can be confident that it is our data that it's using. And then we're going to submit our test case. So um, you can see here it brings up the agent messages and it's working on a test script. Just trying to get it up and running here. Okay, so it's brought up a browser and you can see down the side what it's doing. It's launching the browser, it's doing all of that good stuff and it's taking, let's, let's do this down the side so we can see what's happening. It's taking screenshots as it goes of what is happening. So it's logged in with username and password. It's clicking the login button and verifying successful sign on. So it's validating as it goes as well. So this is compared to a, a good automation script, it is slower. Um, but obviously you've not had to do any of the work in creating the framework or creating the test case itself. You've literally just added in a natural language prompt and got it to do the work for you. Just to see what's happening there a little bit better it's added those items to the um, basket and then it's going to go ahead and uh, check check out from the shopping cart and this is where it should enter our username remember that was amy smith
okay so interestingly okay so it's saying test case finished here so it's now telling us our test case is finished we're not getting the image updates here but it does tell us that everything is completed from start to finish so that's worked for us okay let's just wait for this to hopefully tidy itself up in the meantime let's take a look and view a screenshot that it's taken and a screenshot of the login page yeah that's all looking good So the key thing for me to want to understand is how much does that cost? So to run that test, which is all we used it for, we went from 716 to 716. Still saying 716. Interesting. it didn't cost us anything which is kind of a surprise ah okay so it's starting to charge us now the charging took a bit of time but that cost us say 30 30p to run that single test let's see if it's come down anymore no so that test took about it took quite a long time and it cost about 30p. And it's still not generating that final uh, that final button. If you refresh the screen, it refreshes the model. So I'm going to say that this has kind of crashed on that last step. Really, it's been a couple of minutes now that we've been waiting for that final um, thing to appear. So I'm going to go ahead and close the app. Cool. So obviously... OpenAI don't recommend you use this on any kind of production code. Um, the model's still in preview. Um, but you should potentially be able to, to do further testing um, using the testing agent with any web app you choose. So that would probably take some more ex exploration, I think. Updating the test case target URL. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. I hope this has been useful. Just a very quick update. My credit actually went down to 630. Um, I wonder if this was because of the problems with um, executing that final step, but um, yeah okay it's now gone down to 607 so that actually cost me quite a bit of money just to run one single test case so i think maybe there's things there that need to be uh, need to be looked at because obviously if this is 
if it's going to be this expensive. I don't think anyone's going to go anywhere near it. Okay, thanks.